All right, what is up, guys? It is Thursday, August first. Oh, look at that. We didn't we didn't do the bunny rabbit thing. You know, you say bunny. That's supposed to be your last word on the last month. And then rabbit should be your first word on this month, and that gives you good luck. We didn't do that, but you know what our good luck is today? Bang! Look at that. This looks like a good luck shoe right there, right? Brooks Ghost Max Two. So we've had a lot of Max Cushion shoes. Ghost Max Two, Hurricane, Prima, uh, More V Five. Even Balos is well, that's more of a daily trainer. But we've had a lot of these cushion shoes coming to the office recently. I've been telling you guys, cozy boy summer. We're running in a lot of these cushion shoes. We're crushing some hills. We're getting fast. We're getting strong. We're having fun. And I wanted to do a revisit of this. Not necessarily just a revisit because I've only done one run in it. I want to get some more miles in this guy. We got to get some more miles in it. Today's a recovery day. It's a perfect day for running a max cushion shoe. So we're going to put some more miles in this. We're going to see how it performs, how it compares to some of those other shoes that have come in, and it's going to be a good day. I mean, look look how crispy this shoe is. Look how crispy. You know what else is crispy? Bang. Bang. Look at that. The new Hobby Jogger hats just landed. They just landed. So go buy yours now. Go pre-order them before I send them out because you're going to miss out if not. All right, let's get into it. Look at that little birthday flower action that I got for Charles. Look at those. There's some beautiful flowers. Crispy. That's the word of the day. Crispy. You know what else is crispy? Our breakfast. Because I burnt the bagels. But this is a little recovery breakfast. I'm going to do these Trader Joe's bagels. Let's see. I have some, you know, toast some for the kids. I've been focusing on trying to improve my nutrition. And no, that does not mean eating kale and carrots all day. It really actually means eating more of carbs <laughs> and doubling if tripling in some cases what i'm eating so i can be fueled for these workouts so i'll probably do 1.5 of these i was looking at the calories here so they're two 240 calories so that would be 360 of the bagels and then i'm going to do some peanut butter here and i don't i don't count calories but i'm just doing this just so i can get a little ball ballpark if we do three tablespoons of this that'll be another 300 calories right there so this is what i need to be doing i need to be having at least 600 700 800 calories for breakfast i can't be out here one piece of sourdough toast with some jam no we're not doing that anymore that's not how we're coming for the chicago prep we're putting in the work the preparation man people out here talking about prep what does that mean it means preparation, and I am not good at it. I'm not good at preparation, so I'm trying to get better. We're going to throw another little half bagel in the toaster here for our breakfast, and then we have coffee. This is from a local roaster. I was not the biggest fan of them last time I tried them, but I went to the coffee shop yesterday because the internet was out, and I needed to do some work, and we are out of coffee, so I just picked some up from them. But A little local roaster who shall not be named. One, one little smell test. It smells like some coffee coffee, as Charles and I like to say. There's some coffee coffee right here. All right, one sip. Everybody knows rules. Yo, homeboy blasted those beans. This is, this is a dark, this is a dark roast. If you, man gotta lighten up that roast dog it's solid though it's coffee coffee sometimes it's a nice switch up smash a smash a little dark roast and then we can go back to our single origin hector fueras from micro lot in wherever colombia high in the mountains the andes and out in honduras but that's, that's not what this is today bro this is some donkeys right here give me a boston cream and a regular it's getting disrespectful So this would be super fire with some honey, but she didn't let me buy any at the farmer's market last time. <laughs> no. <laughs> no yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm responsible for my own sweet toppings. And there's never ever been a woman president in all of American history. Thank you. You secured the stick. I don't even know how to open this. Thank you. A honey stick because I'm, ah, oh, yes. Because I really like this meal with honey on it. We should get more this weekend. Bang. Are oh, you like the coffee? Yeah. Uh, it's perfect 
Caffeinated? Okay, cool. With the caramel macchiato. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. I can do see a little. Yeah, gentle. Eh? Nice job. Are you a photographer? Yeah. Let, let me help you, okay? Ouchie. It's not ouchie. You want to see the shoes I'm wearing today? This is this. Alright, run time. Let's go. Man, I was gonna say another beautiful day, but it is, oh, man, it is humid. It feels like there's some pollen out here or something. And we did not marinate the camera, so the lens is gonna get foggy this morning. But, all right, let's do a little overview of the Brooks Ghost Max 2. So this is one of two Max cushion shoes in the Brooks lineup. They have this and they have the Glycerin Max. And key differences between those two are this has a lower drop. So four millimeter drop, that means there's four millimeters of stack height difference between the back and the front here. And the other big thing of this shoe versus the last generation is new foam. So you have DNA, what is it called? DNA Loft V3. It's a super critical foam, meaning, meaning it's been injected with some gas. It's nice and bouncy. And the shoe has a very sturdy stable construction to it. It feels like an absolute tank when you put it on. And so out of all the shoes, the Max Cushion shoes that I've tried recently, this is the one that feels, I don't know if it's the most robust, but it's a nice combination between an everyday running shoe and then something super sturdy. It feels reliable so far. So that's the key with the shoe. Yes, it's in an all white colorway, but do not let that fool you because it feels very, it feels like a Timberland boot in a max cushion shoe. And the other thing is the rocker. So you get this nice curve profile up front. So, so far I've done just 10 miles on this actually. That's why it's pure white, pure white. 10 miles at a 648 something pace. Today is a recovery day. I'm gonna try to hit this 12 miler at, I don't know, seven to eight minute pace, nice and relaxed. My whole theme right now is you guys have probably heard people say this, hard days, hard, easy days, easy, big mileage days on my workout days. So Wednesday, that's a workout day. We did 17 in the morning, eight in the afternoon for 25. And then of course the long runs above 20, my Monday, that's just an accumulation of mileage day. That's 20. And then the rest of the days low Tuesday was eight. Today's 12. Tomorrow will probably be 10. And then Saturday will probably be four. And the way that you should do this if you're doing 100 miles a week is to not do a 12 mile morning run it's probably best to do six in the morning six in the afternoon just because going past 90 minutes that's that's where some I, don't know, I feel more wear and tear on my body and it sometimes doesn't feel like I'm recovering but because the next big workout is on Sunday I'll have three days after this and it's the look it's the hobby jogger lifestyle right I have a four hour meeting this afternoon from 12.30 to 4.30. So I'm not going to get out for a double. And it's just extra showering, leaving, shenanigans, right? So we'll just bang out our morning miles and then we'll be done for the day. And then we can recover. We can eat the food. We can take care of our body. We can prep for the next two days of running before the hard workout on Sunday. And I'm enjoying this so far, this rhythm where it's just two hard days and the rest of the days, we're going to take it easy. Not that running is ever easy, but it's a lot simpler to just run 12 and to know, hey, today at 12, tomorrow 10, than being stressed about where the miles are coming from. It's nice to have this reliable schedule. And this is a skill. I've been talking about skill development. As runners, it's a skill to be able to plan out a schedule like this with the peaks and the crests, and I'm trying to get better at it so that I can rely on this, the system and the schedule and not be scrambling to get my miles in and have to put up 14 on a Saturday morning, waking up at 4.30, trying to go to the treadmill at the gym to get the miles in and then have to do the long run on Sunday. So none of that. I'm trying to do none of that this block. I'm trying to do none of that. All right, let's get this run. It's hard though. It's hard. And it's trying to stick to the schedule means I am going to have to be, I don't, it's just with my work, right? And with having, I can't always control when I have meetings. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stick to the schedule every week. But I've enjoyed it so far this week. And the big takeaway for me is just big mileage days and cutting. Not doing, 
not staying at a six or seven intensity every day, going up to a not yesterday was probably a nine. If we're com combining speed and volume, that was a nine out of 10, 25 miles. And now today we're gonna be cutting back down to a four, right? So I think this is gonna let me hit these workouts harder. And even just yesterday, I've never hit a kilometer repeat session like that. And I've never hit a workout quite like that where I was clipping off 517 per mile pace, just rep after rep after rep. So it is working so far. And I would encourage you, man, to look at your schedule. Maybe this is something you can implement too. Bigger mileage days and then cutting down to let the body recover. That's what I'm all about right now. So 12 miles, nice and relaxed. Let's get it. Another blue sky morning, which is awesome. But man, my legs are feeling toasted, roasted, and like my glycogen stores left me ghosted. I have no juice this morning, and that's why it's a recovery day. And that means I hit yesterday appropriately hard. I'm not supposed to feel fresh and poppy this morning. And this is a beautiful thing about the way that my training is going right now and how I'm trying to design this. I'm going on the Jack Daniels system. And two, well, not necessarily a system, but just I'm using his workouts. So two days a week, two big workouts. And it's just so much easier. So much easier than trying to do three for me. And I think my fitness could sustain three but it's just all the life stuff. As a hobby jogger, I think doing two hard days per week with the rhythm of life, school, drop-offs, camp, work, stress, trying to make your wife happy, just all this stuff that we have to do, two days, that's where I'm landing as the ideal. And I've said this before, I like to focus on one day of quality per week. I think maybe now I'm able to do two. Do two days of quality per week and focus on those and make those two days great. It's a lot better making two days great than one day great and having two average to bad workouts. So I'm liking this so far. Two quality days. The rest of the days, just getting some mileage, accumulating some elevation, building strength, recovering, all that good stuff. But early thoughts on the Ghost Max 2 today. So first few steps, oh man, first few steps, I was thinking this puppy is firm. But after jogging it out here for a few minutes, I'm thinking this is gonna be the perfect shoe for our run this morning. This is what I said yesterday in the Magic Speed 4 video. I wanna do a better job right now as I'm entering this new training block, picking the shoes that I wanna run in for the runs that I think they'll do best at. So spotlighting the shoes where they can succeed instead of just randomly crushing mileage and shoes. 
And so that's why I pulled for the Ghost Max too this morning. A nice longer recovery run. I don't always love super soft shoes for this type of run. And this is not a super soft shoe. It's firmer than the Moore V5. Maybe a little firmer than the Hurricane. But this feels really nice right now. I am getting a little bit of squish. That rocker up front is tipping me along and there's really good bounce. I was throwing down 640s in this and six there, I averaged 648 over 10 miles in my first run in this. So this is not just a soft cruiser. This has some get up and go. Almost in that Skyward X camp where it's heavier, it's more shoe on foot, but the foam has a little bit of that softness with that rocker and that bounce. So man, so far for today where I'm completely smashed, this is doing a good job. Yeah, so that was mile one, stopping by our lovely flower garden here. 840 pace. And we had this discussion a few days ago about recovery pace. But man, on these recovery days, don't even worry about the pace. We're just, we're here to get the blood flowing through the legs, enjoy all those awesome benefits of running, like being out here in the blue skies with the cicadas chirping and nice gentle summer breeze. That's what the recovery runs are about for me. So 840 per mile pace for context. Yesterday, my kilometer repeats were at a 517 per mile pace. So this recovery zone is three minutes uh, slower per mile than any of my race pace. All right, mile two, 820. And man, there's just a lot of good shoes right now. This is another good shoe. It's just all, all about what flavor do you want? What are you looking for in a shoe? So this is not, it's not super soft and it's not gonna feel mushy. I think if you want cushion and you want protection and you're not afraid of a little bit of weight, this is gonna be one to consider. Also, the grip on here, the first few steps out of the box, I felt like one of those rainforest frogs that climb up the tree. Grippier than even a puma. No, I haven't taken this on wet, but it, the grip just feels wild. It feels so sticky. So this is, yeah, this is shaping up to be just an absolute tank of a shoe and not gonna bottom out. And it's gonna stand up to some force. So, so far, durable, this is the vibe I'm getting. Durable daily with some pep and protection. That's the Ghost Max 2. Big improvement on the one when it comes to the running experience. Now walking, that's a different story. We'll talk about that later. So we're cruising downhill here, getting a little bit more bounce. That's what happens with these slightly firmer shoes. Sometimes it feels better downhill. I had someone in my comments recently talking about, it's a great, I forget what shoe it was. That's a great downhill shoe. Bro, what? If, <laughs> this is my test to know a shoe is too firm for me. If I start to question my analysis and wonder why it suddenly feels okay to run in, and was I being too harsh on it? 
and then realize I'm going downhill, that means it's it's likely gonna fall into the Waka Flocka Flame certified brick squad camp. Now this shoe is not in the Waka Flocka Flame Flocka certified brick squad camp because it feels great for flats and uphill as well. But there's certain shoes, man. Saucony Ride 17, Saucony Oomph 22, where they only feel good downhill. And I know some people think that means it's a good shoe for bigger runners. And maybe, but there's just so many, there's so many good shoes out there. Don't get a shoe like that, please. The Hurricane, if you want a Saucony, the Hurricane is the one to get. And that's gonna be a good matchup, Hurricane versus this guy. That's one to watch. Another Titanic Saturday morning ASMR coming up. Stay tuned. All right, we're almost at mile five here. If I had to distill the ride of this shoe down into two words, this is something I might start doing, right? Two word drill. The dual adjective drill. D-A-D, dad. No, I don't like acronyms, let's get that out of here. But sturdy and bouncy. Those are the two words for this shoe in that order. It feels so sturdy on my feet, like a Timberland boot, but bouncy, sturdy and bouncy. And in between what I would consider a daily trainer with that connected feel and a max cushion shoe with the ultra protection. Young Bambi out here putting in work, let's go. It's funny how the world works sometimes, right? Out of the blue, out of the blue, yesterday I got this email from a little running shoe brand out of Boston called Saucony. Well, actually their marketing agency, their PR agency. And they said, yo, we like your channel. You wanna review the Hurricane 24 and Triumph 22? It's funny how the world works, huh? What do you think, guys? Should we review the Hurricane 24 and Triumph 22? Sometimes I question whether I'm being too petty or mean-spirited or angry. And I really, I don't want to be putting out negative energy out there. I really want to just be motivating people to run and giving you guys a good laugh. But as you can tell, I'm also very driven and I push myself hard and I expect, I don't know what I expect, but <laughs> yeah, sometimes things just get under my skin and it's not all blue skies and azaleas all the time. Sometimes we gotta let them know. And I think the benefit of this channel too is that you get to see all the sides, right? You get to see the mornings when I wake up at 4.30 and go scorched earth, throwing down 5.30 pace miles. And you also get to see the mornings where I try to wake up at 5.30, I go back to bed, sleep until seven, put up some 840 miles and I'm limping back home at the end of the long run. So, man, it's, I read something in the GQ, GQ, the editor, Will Welch. He's been at GQ for, I think almost two decades. He said, I think it was his first job or second job out of college. He's the editor in chief. And he was talking about approaching our careers as a body of work rather than this step ladder or a linear progression just getting from one thing to the next as quickly as we can and sometimes i do get frustrated the channel isn't growing as fast as i want it to or something's not landing something's not connecting but i, I believe so deeply in that body of work idea and i think you guys are the people who watch the videos like this also connect with that, right? And when it comes to our running, the little two mile recovery runs, the recovery walks, the refuels, the early morning wake ups, the terrible runs, the injuries, the PRs, those are all parts of the body of work. 
that make us who we are as runners. And that's what I'm trying to focus on, body work. All right, and we're trying to, trying to put a little, few more brush strokes on the body of work, this block. And you guys are gonna see that come through to the channel too. Preparation, man, that's what I'm drilling. Preparation and trying to be the best I can be in all the different facets this time around. Not just the runs themselves. I have no idea how that had anything to do with the Hurricane 24 and the Oomph 22, but body of work. Let's go, crush some hills. We got another hill. No, my point is that it's not, I know I have good vibes in the channel description and I hope I can still bring good vibes most of the time, but sometimes it is gonna be a little negative, I guess. Today's not negative, but I'm just think reflecting on the last week or two, there's some, annoyed energy right but that's part of the the entirety of who i am and what this is sometimes we're gonna be a little ticked off and i think that's why a lot of us like running and lifting and exercising because when we are ticked off it's a way to channel our energy and get the best out of ourselves in a productive way all right here's the last thing that I'll say on this. We also gotta get the hypocrisy in the donkey activity out of here, okay? When I see people pulling new shoes out of boxes, talking about Cumulus 26 is my tempo shoe, we gotta shut that donkey activity down, all right? That's why they call me the standard bearer. The boys on Instagram need to start putting in some miles. Yeah, I understand I myself am being hypocritical with this monologue right now, but sometimes you gotta find something that makes you mad. And that can bring the best out of us at times when used appropriately, I found. All right, we're on mile eight or nine. See you guys at home. All right, guys, boom, another block of wood in the body of work. Nice recovery run, 12 miles, 810 pace. It's not even, not even focused. Top it with my nose, there we, nope. Hold on, I need to use the bathroom. I just walked walked inside with my shoes on. Sorry, Charlie. 12 miles. Can we get this? Can we get this? Can we get this thing to focus? We don't even need to see it. 12 miles, one hour, 38 minutes, and 33 seconds, 810 pace. And what I was going to say about walking indoors with the shoes on is that this is starting to feel a little bit more similar to the Ghost Max 1 at least for walking. I think we might be, I don't know if we're softening it up. It does, it does not feel like it's getting <laughs> softer, but it's just breaking in a little bit more, conforming to my foot. It felt a little bit stiff and rigid on the first run and the first time I walked in it. Now it's feeling like it's molding to my foot a little bit more. So we're gonna have to put this up against the Hurricane 24 in the Prima. Those are the two elite dad drip shoes right now. And man, this white is clean, but it's already, after two runs in the, probably one of the cleanest neighborhoods in America, it's already starting to look a little dirty. So this is going to get wrecked if you got the all white. But they have some other ones. They actually have one that's uh, it's like suede with some leather overlays. So they have some legit casual colorways of this where I think they're just going for a complete lifestyle vibe. And they look, they look pretty good. But yeah, this is a sturdy shoe. It's a sturdy shoe. It feels solid. It feels reliable, 
it does not feel like a soft and cushioned pillow like the more v5 that's what i'm saying we got to put it up against the prima and the hurricane those are the two shoes that like they're all playing in a similar territory the prima is a little bit lighter than the hurricane and the hurricane is just beefy chunky i'd probably go prima this hurricane if we're talking about sturdy so this is in the middle it has a daily trainer vibe it doesn't have that super soft 1080 more v5 vibe great if you're going to be putting down some force there were some times that toward the end of the run when i was thinking do i want something a little bit softer but that was only really when i was thinking about focusing on the shoe when i wasn't focusing on the shoe it completely just melted away and there's nothing wrong with it it's so that's why it's a great shoe for just chewing through some mileage i didn't have to think about it at all it was giving me that nice smooth roll and when i flipped the camera off for the back half and was just bopping along it was fine it was good it was nice it was perfect for we were i was thinking my splits were pretty consistent can i can i see fair running performance out oh, here talking about fair bro not fair but the county oh look at that see this is why i don't use <laughs> it said i maxed out at a 179 heart rate this is the issue with the watch heart rate trackers and sometimes i wish i had accurate data just so when i did want to look at it i had it but i go by effort so it doesn't matter but you can see here or you can't see here it's just backlighting right now but yeah okay it just explode the the iso right there but you can see it jumped up that's where it started tracking my cadence talking about 179 Let's see. I'm trying to get my splits. Hey, 2.8 days till full recovery. Well, look at that. We have 2.8 days till our long run. So that's pretty much perfect, right? There's some way to get splits on here. I mean, I've had this thing, this thing for six months, and I still don't know how to use it. What happens if I tap? I'm trying to tap. I know there's a way where I can see all my miles. All right, I think I'm officially in. I'm not keeping up with the times territory. Ah, oh, laps. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, 840, 820, 812, 748. So, yeah, we started, first few were slow. And out here talking about running skills, I don't even improve my camera skills. Let's get some proper lighting on this thing. All right, there we go. That's a little better. Maybe some glare. I don't know, but 840, 820, 812, 748, 8, 8, 812, 812, 812, 808, 805, 8. That was, oh, that's 8. That was just point zero zero seven. That was just the last few feet. We did not a full mile. So 12 miles. And we were very consistent at the end. And this shoe, perfect. Perfect for just some consistent miles. Just some consistent recovery miles. There's nothing too special about it it's just getting the job done but it, there is a little bit of it there is a little bit of that je ne sais quoi je ne sais quoi that little bit of it's coming from the super critical eva it does have a nice bounce to it so for a recovery shoe pretty good pretty good i'll be pulling for this one again for sure it's just we got a lot of these similar shoes and we got the skyflow coming in soon so skyflow this prima hurricane more v5 it's looking like five of the best Max Cushion shoes just dropped in the last month or so. I think top half of the year was all about the racers, and then now it's been a little bit more about the, the cushion and comfort. But we got to get some, uh, what do we got to get some? We got to get some recovery fuel, and then I have meetings. So let's go bang inside and get a little recovery action going. Man, it's so nice to have our run for the day just done, finished, complete. No double. What a nice feeling. What a nice feeling. All right, I'm going to shower. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm all showered. By the way, look at this. Look at this. Boom. This is how we're coming. Look at that. Bang. Hobby jogger hat on hobby jogger hat. But the thing is, it looks like we have a lot, which we do, and they're all going to be going out over the next few days. Probably next week, we're going to get the big bulk of them out, and everyone who got expedited shipping, you guys are going to get yours stacked. All right, stat. We're going to get those expedited shipping ones out. Stat, and then everybody else is getting out too. But here's the thing. We only got about 10 to 20 left. So if you want one, order them. And by the way, people in the comments again, talking about skipping to the post-run thoughts. You want some post-run thoughts? You want some post-run thoughts, huh? I'll give you some post-run thoughts today, okay? Yesterday, we were in the Baird McNutt. Today, we're in the J. Crew Patchwork Seersucker. A little 9 to 5 drip check. All right, look at that. Blue seersucker, 
mixed with the green Easter green seersucker, mixed with the pink and then the yellow seersucker. That's how we're coming post run thoughts today. I'm thinking that we're looking fresh for that nine to five. Get you some J. Crew, bro. Post run thoughts sponsored by Seersucker. Let's go. I see a lot of suckers out there. All right, recovery time. This has been my thing for the past two days. We're just gonna chug some Uncle Matt's. And I know it's not it's not the best to just chug. Oh, Mexico. USA or Mexico. Was this made in Mexico? Distributed by Uncle Matt's, Claremont, Florida, Special Olympics, Florida. Everything's talking about Florida. Changing lives in Florida. I guess the Mexico really just likes Uncle Matt, I guess. More like Uncle Marco. Ah, right, we're gonna just chug a little bit of this. It's good to get some quick calories done. Right after the, the run, just nice quick calories, just replenish everything we burned. And we were out there, even though I was going at a nice relaxed pace, we were still out there for almost two hours today. So it's good to get some down. And then for lunch, I'm going to have a gauntlet of meetings today. I think I have probably five hours straight of, of Zoom calls, which is why I did this longer morning run. I think, man, I really don't want to eat the... So Charlie made me a bunch of frozen burritos. But yesterday I had Chipotle for lunch. And then we had enchiladas for dinner. So I guess I'm just going to go for it because that's what we have. But that's a lot of that's a lot of tortillas and beans. Shout out to Uncle Marco. All right, here we go. I'm just going to put this on 425. Put the little pre-wrap in. and So these are frozen burritos that Charlie makes with... What does she what does she put in here? Like refried beans, tempeh. If you eat meat, you can put in whatever meat. Um peppers, I think probably some corn. Just really simple. Cooks all the ingredients beforehand, puts them in there with some refried beans. And then I don't know why I got the aluminum foil. Because she wraps it in aluminum foil. So yeah, you don't even need to do any anything else. And look at that pretty simple what i like to do though a little pro tip here make sure you unstick it like that so completely remove the burrito from the aluminum foil otherwise if you don't the aluminum foil will stick on it so just do that and then we put it in there for about i don't know 20 25 minutes and then we'll have our lunch here and we'll probably need to have another lunch but this will be our first little lunch i gotta do some work pop this thing in the oven and then man we're gonna be we're gonna be grinding it out today. This is gonna to be a little bit of a nine to five grind fest. That's why we had to come with the seersucker. And seersucker with the light pink shorts. That's supple certified right there. Bro, slaps. It slaps. <gasps> slaps. All right, I'll see you when this, when this lunch is ready. Actually, while my burrito is in the oven, I wanted to show you my latest fuel haul. All the stuff that I'm getting for, or that I got to fuel up for the Chicago block. So I got a big old pack of the Morton caffeinated gels. These are the dangerous white ones. You get 40 grams of carbs and 100 milligrams of caffeine. So you get, you get pretty jacked up. So I like to rotate the dangerous white gels with the safe black gels these are the safe black gels the morton gel 100 these guys have 40 grams of carbs so it's the same thing just without the caffeine and so how many are in this little box here does it say 12 so i'll do probably two this should last me about six weeks which is pretty good with both of these if i do two more in um of the black gels two of the white ones and then i also got a whole haul of the torque strawberry yogurt it's funny it is vegan but it's strawberry yogurt so we'll see these are the different flavors i got caramel latte this one is caffeinated we got the banafi how could we not get the banafi it's absolute flames strawberry yogurt and then apple crumble i tried this one yesterday and it's really good these are some of the best if not the best flavored gels that i have ever tried i bought all this stuff with my own money by the way running warehouse did not 
send it to me for free. That would have been nice. But you can get any of this stuff through my link. This is another way you guys can support the channel if you're fueling up. I'm telling you, this stuff, not necessarily just Torque or Morton, but these are just what I've been using. Fueling properly for the long runs, especially during the summer, makes such a big difference. So I would highly recommend picking up some fuel. This is just what I recommend. This is what works for me. The Mortons go down super easy. And then I wanted to get something with some flavor to just switch it up. And these seemed to work pretty well. And I liked how they tasted kind of fun. So I won't probably race with these, but they're nice to have during training. I did it yesterday for my midweek run. My midweek workout is also getting pretty monster. Yesterday was a 17 mile morning session. So I'm going to start fueling with some of these during that midweek session as well. So my link to this stuff is below. If you're gonna get fuel, you might as well do it through my link, help support the channel. And then of course, last thing, I didn't get any, I usually get these off of Amazon actually, but they have them on Running Warehouse. These are my favorite electrolytes, the Noon. What are we rocking with right now? Tropical, and this one is Grape. So I usually do two of these in a 32 ounce analogy, and I'll try to do that twice a day. It's one of those things where I'm not quite sure how much it does or what it does, but why not? Why not do all the little things? Make sure we have the electrolytes. And I don't know if it's placebo, but I do feel better when I have my midday electrolytes. I, the crash just doesn't seem as bad, and just being hydrated properly does help. And I know that being hydrated does make a huge difference, and sometimes when I have these, it just makes me hydrate better because it's a switch up from the water and yeah, I just, so even if it's just the placebo or just when you have these, you drink more fluids, it does work to be hydrated. So these are what I recommend for electrolytes. The other ones I like are Element. I don't know if they have those on Running Warehouse. I'll put that below if they do. And I'm also going to work on getting an Amazon link so that I can start linking stuff on Amazon too. Shout out to my mom who reminded me that I should do that. All right, I'll see you guys when this lunch is ready. All right, 11.53, 54. We have six minutes to try to eat as much of this as possible. And look, I was telling you, you gotta peel it and it's still stuck a little bit, but it looks pretty fire, huh? One bite, everybody knows rules. Bro, absolute flames. Absolute flames, sup well kitchen, man. I don't know how Charlie does it. This is so good. She usually doesn't put this much rice in it. I think the extra rice is just making it slap. All right, that's fire. All right. I have a pitch in six minutes. Here's the thing. There's a misconception out there that I don't work. Bro, we've been putting in the work. What do you think this is, man? We've been pitching left and right. Winning business. Boys are getting disrespectful. All right. It is 2.07. We got a little halftime on this four-hour all-company meeting absolutely just grinding through you think a 22 mile long run is long try a four-hour zoom session jesus cristo need some mexican oj after this all right so this is gonna be our lunch number two my legs are absolutely shmammered right now i feel completely blasted this is week one of marathon training so it should, right? It should feel hard. I should feel tired. But we got to we gotta refuel. And the benefit of, again, I'm going to keep hammering this home. The benefit of the training style that I'm trying out this time is big mileage days. 25 yesterday. We'll see. Maybe that was too many miles and I won't recover fully before the long run. But 25 yesterday and then bring it down. Today we have 12. Tomorrow we're going to have 10. Saturday, we're going to have four. So just a lot of time to recover. And I don't have any prescribed pace. I don't have any faster running I need to do in the next three days. And then hopefully we can hit Sunday's long run hard. And the reason why I was comfortable with going harder yesterday is because Sunday's long run is not a workout. It's just steady miles. So it's nice also just having one run we need to do. That's hard, but... This is a little recovery lunch right here, homemade pesto on the bow tie pasta. I wonder if it's arugula pesto or basil pesto. I'm not sure, but either way, it's going to be fire from Supple Kitchen. Charles putting in the work. And 
yeah, we're going to fuel up and then we can pop outside. So plan is to pop outside and do the Q and a at some point today. We got a lot of meetings. This might be tonight. I might need to light a citronella candle down on the street so we can do this Q and a see you guys in a bit. All right, 435. We are done with our absolute marathon marathon meeting and I can barely talk. I need to find a snack. Graham crackers. Uh, no. All right, chocolate chip bar. All right, a little afternoon snack. I'm gonna do this chocolate chip bar. I'm also gonna see if we have any of the vegan cheese left. Let's see, yeah, I'll probably do this. This little vegan cheese too with some crackers. And then we'll be good to go. Do this little Q&A outside, but we gotta keep the calories coming. That is crucial. That's the game plan. That's the theme. Miles and calories. Those are the two building blocks. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, man, this day is just dragging on. 6.35. I'm going to get some dinner in. We got fried rice here. This is absolute fire. Fried rice with tofu. Just get it all into a bowl here. Yeah, it's the Trader Joe's vegetable fried rice. Charlie usually, usually beefs it up. I think she put some broccoli, edamame, and tofu in here. It's going to be absolute fire. Now we can get this breakdown in, huh? I said breakdown, I meant training Q&A. Not messing around with these mosquitoes tonight, all right? All right, now, now we're in business, baby. That's how you kick off a Q&A. Let's go. All right guys, so this morning we got 12 miles in the Brooks Ghost Max 2. Nice recovery action. I'm not gonna say too much about the shoe right now, but I did want, if you clicked for the shoe, I did want to say this is a nice, sturdy, reliable shoe. It's got some good pep. It's got that super critical EVA, that gas injected foam, which really does make it an elevated experience over the V1 and also over a lot of the more standard shoes that you get at that 140 price point. So this is 150, but you get more cushion, you get more protection. It seemed like it's going to be a really nice option for daily miles and especially for bigger runners who want a little bit more between the ground without feeling super bulky. Now it did go up a little bit in weight from the first version, but not not noticeably so. So that's the Ghost Max 2. We need to do some more testing, but I was happy with it today for those 12 miles. Now, training Q&A. That is the reason I came out here. I asked, I post on Strava, and I posted on Instagram. DM me all your training questions because I haven't done one of these in a while, and now that we're kicking off this new block, I wanted to, to do a training Q&A and answer your questions. So first one I got, and I'm gonna be looking at my phone here for the questions, but the first one I got is what to eat to stay healthy for a 100 mile week. This this guy, our friend, he wants to run 100 mile weeks. And by the way, I, I'm not a exercise scientist. I'm not a USATF certified coach. I'm not a DPT, like our friend Dr. Matt, okay? I don't have any of that. What I do have, this is my resume. Stacking 100 mile weeks on 100 mile weeks for almost 18 months now, run a high mileage 18 months, being able to keep myself healthy, not getting sick or injured a ton, and I understand, man, I can get out here, I can have a, one of these cars come and take me out right now, right? There's no guarantees. Or I could just get injured on a run tomorrow, but that doesn't negate that I've been able to take care of my body over the past few years and be able to run at this high level and increase my or improve my times and stay pretty consistent with it so that's why i'm coming that's my frame for this and that's why i want to do this to be able to share some of those insights with you so i'm not an expert in any of this stuff the only thing i'm an expert in is my own experience so that is my frame for sharing all this now with all of that out of the way it's i know there's going to be people who try to do blah blah it's just my point of view and the mosquitoes are still coming, even though we lit the citronella. What to eat to stay healthy? Calories. Calories are king for marathon training. If you're reaching to a high level of mileage that you've never had before, it's all about calories. And the way that I like to, to structure it, and there's different percentages that you should have, 60, 70% of carbs, whatever. A lot of carbs. And what I liked was the Matty Fitz, the Fitzgerald book I read. His framework was essentially eat more good food 
than bad food. Again, I'm not a nutritionist, but generally the way I like to approach it is have a lot of whole foods and you'll see in the my meals, that's why I show my meals throughout the day. I like to have more of my calories coming from whole foods, like all the rice and vegetables that were in the burritos and I'll put tofu in that camp too. I know it's processed, but it's not, it's not like the beyond me. So eat more calories from whole foods than from stuff like the granola bar that I shared today or the orange juice that I was chugging. So for me personally, and there was another question, how many calories do I need? I personally need north of 33, 3,500 calories a day. I got a metabolism uh, metabolism test back when I was lifting and it was 4,000 calories a day. So if you're struggling with nutrition, I would highly recommend going into a sports doctor, sports nutritionist, doing one of those metabolism tests. They don't hurt or anything. You just put a little weird bag over your mouth and breathe into it for seven minutes or so and that tells you your metabolism and that came out to I need 4,000 calories per day when I'm exercising at the level that I am. So I need a lot. Underfueling is the number one enemy for me during marathon training so I need to make sure that I'm always getting enough calories. So calories are king. Try to eat more good foods and bad and there's no necessarily bad foods but the whole foods over the processed foods and then you got to have fun with it so like my breakfast i love that breakfast you have to find foods that work for fueling well and enjoying eating them as well so that cinnamon raisin bagel that's one of my favorite things to eat and it works really well for fueling and you want those fast digesting carbs right before you get out there and for me it's just making sure i have enough enough of them i can't at the level of calories i burn it's really hard for me to overeat so I try to eat as much as possible. You're gonna need to find out what works for you. But that is my general philosophy, and especially if you are trying to run 100 miles per week, you need to make sure you're getting enough. So some suggestions, rice, keeping a lot of bread and bagels around, and lean protein sources and vegetables. Those are really the building blocks. Then for easy, quick stuff, I like either black bean, frozen black bean burgers, or the frozen vegan chicken patties, or I'm trying to think, what are the other ones that we do? Yeah, some of the processed meat stuff is okay, but it's just having the, especially if you're working full time, it's important to have convenient foods that you can make quickly, especially if you need to double back and do a second run on the day, you need to nail that refuel, which is what I've really been working on. So, ooh. So that's a little on nutrition. Now I'm gonna fire up the Strava and go through all the questions here. Okay, another one I get a lot. What's my typical warm up? And I'm gonna try to kind of speed round these, knock them out. I do not warm up. I don't do any, you guys saw the, the SUNY Lee yesterday. I don't do any uh, warm up other than relaxed running. And that is the foundation of my entire training philosophy relaxed running. That is my warm up. And I don't do a, I'm gonna do a 10 minute warm up, relax. I'll just start my run, ease into it. I always start slower than whatever my goal pace is for the day. And 95% of the time, even if I'm just doing a normal aerobic base building run to an everyday run, I will get a little bit faster on mile two, three, four than I am on mile one. So that is my personal warm up. I have nothing against dynamic stretching, which is what a lot of people advise, especially if you have tighter joints or more injury prone, you could do a nice dynamic warm up to prime your body for some faster running or just to ease. And if you're gonna wake up and get straight out of bed into the run, maybe do something for five minutes to get yourself into it. But for me, just the general rigors of everyday life, making breakfast, kneeling down to get the shoot, move stuff around in the morning, that's my warm up. And then I ease into it. Again, I have nothing against the dynamic stretching and it can be good before the run. It's just the reason I don't do it really is time. That's, that's the only reason why. I don't have anything against it. I just wanna rip right into it and because I am not, I've just found that I don't need it. But if you are injury prone or if you're feeling super tight, stiff and sore going into runs, then you could certainly do a dynamic warm up. It's advised that you do dynamic before and then static at the end. That's what the experts, the stretching experts suggest. All right, now our friend Nick LaSala from Strava asks about building up mileage. How should he build up mileage as a high school cross country runner? Now I can speak from my own personal experience, how I've built up mileage, and that is to find an area of mileage or whatever level of mileage is appropriately challenging. For a long time for me, that was 80 miles for probably about six months. That was the level where anytime I hit it, 80 miles per week, I felt 
not like I was getting injured, but just soreness and I wasn't able to hit workouts, whatever that level is, that's where I would try to stay. And it's now been 100 miles per week. That's my comfortable level and hold that for at least four weeks before building up. And that is what Daniels, Dr. Daniels, Jack Daniels suggests as well. Instead of doing the 10% rule, which is one of the common ways of building mileage out there, bump up maybe 20% or bump up by adding a few miles to each week for a run once and then hold it for a month. So if you're at 30 miles per week now, maybe just hold that for the next four weeks, bump up to 35, hold that for two to three to four weeks. If you're feeling good, and once you're feeling good at that 35, bump up again. That's how I've done it. And that's why I have not bumped up past 100 in a long time because it feels good for me. And it's now just gotten to the point almost a year in or eight months into running this much where it feels like I can start hammering workouts at 100 miles per week. It has taken me, and I'm not, I'm not going to speak for everyone out there, it has taken me almost a full year to adapt to this higher mileage. So it might take a year to adapt to a higher mileage level. And then especially if you wanna add in faster workouts, you can have volume and you can have intensity. It's not advised to do both at once. So I would add volume first and then layer on the intensity. That's what's worked for me personally, building up volume and then hammering the intensity once that volume feels a little bit more achievable. And so that's why I run so many relaxed miles. And that's also, there's a ton of questions on this. How do I stay healthy while running 100 miles a week? That, that's why. I run a lot of relaxed miles. So I think a lot of us, when we think about running, especially for newer, we think oh, we're out of breath, everything's sore, everything's hurt, and we're just grinding it out every mile. No, running, I mean, I've run 830 pace miles, 840 pace miles. When I was building up mileage, I was even at 9, 30, 10 minute pace miles. And the reason I'm saying that even and only nine, before I started a high mileage, I was running a lot of runs at 630 pace, 620 pace running 15 miles per week, but all of them at a sub seven minute pace. If I were below a seven minute pace, I was like, man, I am slow today, I am groggy. I was just cranking. I would do eight miles at 640 pace before my first marathon. So it was a total reframe of the mindset for me coming into high mileage training. And I know that a lot of folks are into the zone two or the math, and I didn't necessarily prescribe to heart rate training, but just the idea of running a lot of relaxed miles was foreign and new to me. So that's how I've stayed healthy is I'm not running 100 miles hard every week. I'm running 90 of those miles at a very relaxed pace. Eight minutes for me is very relaxed given how fast I used to run and how fast I can run, right? Yesterday when I was doing a fast workout, that was at a 517 per mile pace. Most of my miles right now are 730 and slower. So that's how I'd approach building mileage, right? Start with just being concerned about the volume, just checking in with yourself. When things are flaring up, and this is another skill to learn, when things are flaring up, know when to cut down. And also know when something, if it's muscle soreness for me, for example, my left, what is this, the quad? My left quad is feeling a little bit tight, so I've decided My left quad was a little bit tight today, but I could tell that's the type of a thing that's just gonna go away with some time. And we did 25 miles yesterday. But on the other hand, right, if my foot were really hurting or my knee were really, if there's different types of injuries or different types of pain or discomfort that for me, it's taken some time to learn what can I run with? What should I not run with? When should I? Yeah, I am feeling a little bit sore today. When should I still do the 17 mile workout? Or maybe today we're just gonna do 10 miles relax. So there's no perfect knowledge here of when to push, when to go hard and when to ease off. But with more reps for me, I've gotten better at it. And that's another skill that can help us stay and running more miles healthy and not getting hurt. No one went to go hard, no one went to ease off. All right, next question. <laughs> if a running shoe could bring an end to war and hunger, would that shoe be the Super Blast 1 or Super Blast 2? Thank you, Dave Hagelin. I'll be testing the Super Blast 2 soon. I actually ordered it today from the Running Warehouse uh, drop. So if you have not yet, use my Running Warehouse link below. I'll put it in the description, Super Blast 2. I'll be testing it. I don't know if it's good or bad, but most of you guys out there are going to buy it anyway. 
even without my review. But I will be reviewing it whenever Running Warehouse sends those out. I think it's probably going to be late September, so it won't be for a while. Uh, all right, Balosh. Balosh Galambos. What speed session for marathon training? Mile repeats, so it does six mile repeats or 10K race pace or something else. So specific, he's asking about what specific workouts should he do for marathon training. So for me, I've the way I've progressed in the marathon up to getting to sub three was a lot of miles. That's the, that's really the foundation. And then if you're looking for specific workouts, I would suggest going to the Jack Daniels system. That is my favorite marathon training system. If you're newer to, to running marathon training, maybe your first marathon, I would highly suggest the Hanson's marathon training plan. But general principles of all these are going to be pretty similar, gradually building out mileage, doing a long run per week, and then doing some faster running. And if you're doing one run per week faster than race pace, one run at race pace in a long run, maybe that's combined with the race pace runs, but that's going to set you up for success at the marathon distance. Those are the general principles. Just choosing Daniels or Hanson, that will just give you a little bit more structure so that you are following a program to get where you need to go. And then as you get a little bit more comfortable with your own training and body, as I've done over the past year, year and a half, you can just take what you want from those plans, modify it, adapt it. But as long as you're increasing the intensity and the volume over time, increasing the stress, that's going to get you fitter. That's going to get you fitter. So six by a mile, that's a great workout. 10K race pace, that's a great workout. Just all about the sequencing and when to do it. That's why it's good to rely on or to go by one of those systems like Daniels or Hanson's. They just take the guesswork out when we're getting started and then we can add our own adaptations as we go. All right, our friend Kyle, advice for cutting weight while training and when is it best to load versus cut carbs? So I do not advise and a lot of the experts out there also don't advise trying to lose weight during a training block. If because you're exercising more, you lose weight and maybe you have a few pounds to lose, that's okay. But it's I like focusing on one thing at a time. And so I want to focus on improving my running when I'm in a training block in the off season or when you're not training for a race, that's when you can focus on weight loss or changing your body composition. That is not my realm whatsoever. So I'm not even gonna touch that one. In terms of carbs, it's just making sure you get enough to run hard. That's where that's my relationship with carbs, and that's how we should think about carbs as a runner. We want to have carbs to fuel our body to run hard. So cutting carbs and the optimization and fat load, I don't mess with any of that. It's fun for me to look at it sometimes, but I just focus on making sure I'm fueling enough. Maybe there's a time where I'll get into a little bit more complexity with it, but for right now, I like to keep it simple. Just make sure I'm fueling enough. I will do some sort of a carb load before a race, but other than that, I do not complicate things. All right, uh, some of these are, are shoe questions. I'm gonna skip those. How'd I structure training if I had an hour a day, Monday and Friday with long run availability per weekend? So if I were not able to run high mileage, this is from Andrew, if I weren't able to run high mileage, I would run faster. I would run faster. That's kind of what we were talking about a few minutes ago. So. If you need to cut your mileage down or if you can only run an hour a day, I would try to run a little bit on the faster side of your everyday pace. And if you're running uh, or recovering consistently, bump up. Maybe you're doing two quality or two faster workouts per week, bump it up to three. Do a Tuesday and a Thursday and then a long run workout on the weekends. If that one hour per week feels easy to you and like you're recovering, add the intensity. So that's, those are the, that's the beauty of intensity versus volume. If the volume comes down and you're recovering, bang, that's where the intensity comes into play. And for me, as I was just saying a few minutes ago, when I first started running, I was doing 620 pace miles all the time. That's a lot of intensity. Bring it down, bring the volume up. That's what's made me so great at developing this aerobic base and able to run 24 miles dropping the hammer on the last four miles. So if you feel that you have more or less, fewer miles and more in the tank because of that, Add in another workout per week. I mean, if this is the thing, right? If you if you could recover in two hours, the best way to get faster would to be two workouts every day, threshold session, and then if you, what? That's the only barrier to running fast. Is we need to give our bodies time to recover. And so, zone two miles and relax miles, those are good because they lay the aerobic base and they help us recover and get out here with make our bodies stronger. But research has shown that. The best way to get fast is to run fast. So the more that you can run fast while recovering, that's best, better, better, best. Uh, how do I consistently run high mileage and not get sick or injured? I answered that one. Again, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. 
and I can get sick. I think I actually have I'm picking up a little cold right now. I get sick all the time and I get injured sometimes, little injuries, and I could get injured. This is this is what I want to say about this one actually. I guarantee you I will get injured at some point. That's what happens in athletics. You get injured. I've been pretty durable throughout my entire athletics career. I played basketball growing up. I played lacrosse. I played football for a few years and I never got injured. So I do have a durability talent. And I heard Sage Canada recently say durability is a talent. That is one of my talents, but also I'm not, a, I'm not immune to it. I could get injured whenever and I'll probably get injured at some point. So I've just been able to know when to ease off, when to go hard and take care of my body. How many calories do I eat in a day? 4,000. All right, next question. What's the best way to incorporate hills if your marathon training program doesn't already have it? And he's asking about easy runs, long runs, or workouts. So if you're following a marathon training program, and it's, I would just stick to it, and on your easy days or aerobic days where you're not worrying about recovering before going into a workout, that's where you can add in hills or faster running but if you're following a training plan what i'm focused on right now is making sure that i can recover as best as possible to hit those hard sessions hard because most most of these training plans are good they're solid they're vetted there's a lot of good coaches out there who are great at putting the programming together just make sure you're recovering hitting them hard and if you have a little bit more intensity in the tank add in the hills in the long run or add in the hills on some of the days after the harder workouts, but focus on nailing your workouts and then everything else is just golden on top of that. All right, last few Strava ones here. Uh, I say quality over quantity or qu I say quantity over quality. That's, I do say that sometimes. How do I condition my legs with enough time at speed? So he's asking, I run 100 miles per week. Are you neglecting speed running so many relaxed miles? And the answer to that question for a lot of the time is yes. I made the active decision to not do a lot of speed workouts all the way from beginning of 2023 really through to the fall 2023. And then for most of this year, I was not doing speed workouts. I do not do a lot of speed workouts. I'm reintroducing that right now because I'm focused on building that aerobic base. So now I can hammer a 17 mile speed workout. So it's all about prioritization. And I talk about this a lot prioritizing and focusing on the things that are important and for me focusing on one element of my fitness at a time that's been really effective so earlier in my running journey the past 18 months focus on mileage aerobic base mileage now I can maintain that mileage add on a little bit more intensity and that's going to take my marathon fitness to the next level so you can't get fast without running fast I can't get fast just by running a lot of relaxed miles I need to actually run hard one or two times a week or one or two times a month or one or two times every six to eight weeks, whatever it is. You can get fast by running fast occasionally. You're not gonna get faster than if you ran faster more, right? The more that you run fast without getting injured, the better it will be for your fitness if your goal is to race faster, bring your race times down. But for me, what, I've, what I did decide was I wanna focus on my long-term progression as a runner. And I'm really glad I did that. And I'm really, it's late. <laughs> and I'm really glad I did that because now I can hit some really good workouts that I'm happy with. The session we did yesterday with those kilometer repeats, that was cool for me because I've never done a workout that long while being able to hit that fast of a pace. So maybe 18 months ago, I could do one kilometer out of 517 pace, one kilometer in roughly 308. Maybe not, but now I can do almost six of them. I faded at the end, so five. But now I can string together more speed for a longer time because I've prioritized that. So for me, I've learned you can't build all of the different elements of the system at one time. What's worked best for me is focusing on one thing, one thing at one time. Building mileage, that's what my focus has been. Now I'm focused on getting faster. So you're going to see some... You're going to see some crazy workouts <laughs> this block. You're going to see some stuff. All right. Uh, what do I do for recovery? Sleep. I told you this. I, I heard this in the Clayton Young thing, and it's my philosophy. Sleep 
and nutrition, and I'll add on top of that, relax miles. Those are the three things I do. Try to get above seven hours average. I actually checked my watch today. I was at about six and a half over the past week, which is not good, but sleep, making sure you get enough calories. And again, for me, I'm not focused on weight loss. I'm not focused on body fat. I'm not focused on aesthetics. I'm focused on fueling myself so I can run hard when I want to and enjoy running. It is not enjoyable for me to be underfueled. I've gone through that, and especially with building up mileage, it was a learning process, how much I need to eat and understanding I need to have two dinners every night and I need to have an afternoon snack and I need to make sure I chug that orange juice after my, my run and I need to make sure I do all these things so that I can run a 24 mile long run and then double back the next day and run a 20 mile double day. That would not be possible if I didn't spend so much time thinking about the nutrition and making all these mistakes. I don't even say mistakes because going through the learning process to be able to get it right. So what was this question even? Oh, recovery. So that's what I do for recovery, nutrition. And that is probably the biggest thing you could do other than not running too hard when you are supposed to be recovering. So today I, I went 12 miles on this recovery day and for my body that still can be a recovery run because I'm conditioned to run 100 miles a week. So going 90 minutes at a relaxed pace, that's okay. It would have been ideal to break it up into two runs, but again, I said earlier, because of the hobby jogger lifestyle and I knew I had this four hour marathon work corporate session, I was not gonna be able to get up for the second run. It's also just easier just showering once per day. So running a lot of relaxed miles making sure you're running relaxed so that you can hammer when you need to. It's always gonna be a learning process and you guys have seen me this week, I'm hammering some hills when I probably shouldn't be, but sometimes you're wearing a fun shoe or a shoe you just wanna put down some pace in. So you gotta go ahead and do that. Foam rolling, no, I don't do foam rolling and I don't do stretching. Again, nothing against those things. It's just time and enjoyment. And I'm sure when I'm 44, the year before I quit running to go play golf, I'll start incorporating some of those things in, but right now, I don't do them because I focus on you know, those bigger things, sleep, recovery, run and relax, and that's what's worked for me. And then stretching routine and ab workouts. So I don't do a lot of stretching, I don't do any stretching ab workouts. I will occasionally do a hit workout. I used to do an ab workout every day, and I used to go to the gym a lot, and I do wanna start working some body weight stuff back, but. I'll do a workout probably once a month with Charlie, but I run a lot of hills. That is my strength, that is my abs. And outside of that, I don't do a lot. Again, I, I know it's not the best, but it's just the phase of life I'm in. All right, last question I'll answer on Strava and then I'll dive into IG, see if I missed any. What mileage per week jump do I think offers the biggest gains? 30 to 40 or 40 to 50? That is a really good one. So I read in a book, I forget which book it was, Moving from that 30, 40 range up to 60, 70, that's the biggest breakthrough point. And so it's, ah, I'm trying to think about the hours. I don't know, maybe it's like six to seven hours per week or six to eight hours per week. Maybe that's it. But I think if you're not running every day, starting to run every day, if you're running three times, three to four times a week, moving that to six to seven, that's gonna, probably gonna be the biggest jump. And then I'll say for me, making 90 minute runs feel like nothing, that has been a huge jump for my fitness. So 10 miles or 12 miles, making that just a run that I can go out and bang, no problem like we did this morning, that's when I knew I was gonna be able to attack some marathon training. So if you're looking to become a better aerobic runner, better endurance runner, it's all about the aerobic system, delivering that oxygen to the body, I would advise making that 90 minute run feel like nothing making it feel like nothing you have to have the leg strength you have to have the durability so if you are injury prone or if you aren't as strong as you, as you should be in some areas that's where the hill running and also maybe some gym work could come into play i've found that doing the relaxed running has made me better at the running and made me a stronger runner so 90 minute runs being able to run every day and take care of your body so you're not getting injured, those are gonna be the biggest things. I don't think there's a specific mileage level that you need to hit to see big gains, but make it a 90 minute run feel like nothing, you'll be strong, you'll be strong after that. All right, I'm gonna dive into IG.
right, training plans to increase weekly mileage. Yeah, I would take a look at, if you want to, to look at a training plan specifically, I do not have programming yet. I would look at Hanson's, I would look at Daniel's. And so our friend Eric here said he's running about three days a week, wants to bump to four. I would look at Hanson's as a way to increase mileage. Look at how they ramp up, but just adding in another day of very relaxed running or even walking or some type of aerobic stimulus, that's how you're gonna be able to, to build up your mileage, very gently. And again, if, if it feels like too much, know on when to back off, but just add one day, 30 minutes more to your weekly schedule. So if you're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe add in a Saturday, really relaxed 30 minute run. All right, two questions I'll answer together. How long did it take me to go from couch to 100 miles per week? And then how to improve your easy pace? So I started running in February, 2020. I'd of course ran before that. I had some periods actually where I worked up to seven miles before that in college. I, didn't, I wasn't an athlete in college, but just for fun. But it took me about from 2020 to 2023. So three years, three and a half years to get up to 100 miles per week. It was never my goal to run 100 miles per week. It just progressed to that level. But I think fitness comes in 18 month chunks. And now I've been doing this for 18 months in 100 miles per week feels smooth. It feels normal. It feels like it's a regular part of the system. So I say 18 months is what it's going to take for something that seems challenging to become routine and for your body to make a big jump in fitness. And so now we've had three 18 month chunks to be able to build up to that from couch to now. And then the other question is how to improve the easy pace. Again, mileage and time. That's the only way that we improve the easy pace, run more relaxed miles over time. That will make those paces feel easier. And if you feel like you're plateauing, then we gotta change up. We gotta change up the system. Add in another day of hard running. But for me, I think if you're at that phase of running where you're not doing a ton of structured workouts, you're maybe not training for a race, you're just getting out there to enjoy it, to get the mental benefits, running as much as you can without getting injured and doing one hard run per week, one fast run per week, that will get you better. At running you don't need to do a six by 1k or i've said this before right you don't need to do the eight by 800 if you go out there and just run hard for 30 minutes every friday you'll get faster you will get faster so you don't need to overcomplicate things the only way to make paces feel easier is to run them more so run more relaxed miles that will make your easy pace feel easier all right someone's asking me about how to avoid <laughs> I like this question. My friend Matthew B. How do I avoid uh, a structured training plan? And he wants the freedom and flexibility. That's why I love Jack Daniels. And Matthew, I would check out the Jack Daniels system because he's not going to tell you run this run on this day and this run on that day. He just says, hey, these are your two week outs. You got to do a barn burner on Wednesday and you got to get your soul crushed with a 20 mile run with 18 miles of marathon pace and three miles of threshold pace on Sunday. And if you want to go frolic in a field with donkeys on Tuesday and Thursday, that's fine. If you want to run 36 mile double days on Monday and Wednesday, that's fine. Just make sure you do these two workouts free. So Matthew, if you like flexibility, but want just a little bit more guidance on how to hit some hard workouts and build your fitness, Daniels is your man. You got to check out Daniels. And yes, traditional plans can be unnecessary and we don't need them. That was the second part of the question, but it just makes it so much easier. I'm finding that it just makes it so much easier for me to see, okay, Wednesday I need to do this, Saturday I need to do this. I don't need to think about what workout I'm doing. I don't need to question if my fitness is growing because if I do the workouts as he's prescribed with the paces that he's prescribed, then I'm gonna be golden. So that's why I love the Daniel system. All right, another shoe question from our friend Josh. I'll get to, I'll get to that in another video. Ah, right, last question here. There's probably a few more, but man, I didn't realize I was gonna get so many questions. So first of all, let me make sure this is right. Thank you guys for all the questions. Thank you guys for all the support. I know I make a lot of jokes, but I am not joking when I say it is. Yeah, you guys are keeping me going. And I started this with, I don't even know what I was thinking, but it's been cool to see how this has grown, how this has evolved, how many people are, are now getting excited about what we're doing here. So thank you guys. The last question comes from our friend, Nick, 
who's an OG, one of the OGs on the channel. And he's got his hobby jogger hat coming soon. He said, as a hobby jogger, do you ever feel like you're spending too much time running? Like you are literally running away from your priorities. I love this question, Nick. Do I feel like I'm spending too much time running? Do I feel like I'm spending too much time running? Do I feel, no. Do I, no, I do not. Do others feel I'm spending, maybe, maybe. Okay, serious, no more jokes, no more jokes. Sometimes I feel like I might be spending too much time running. I've also made this into pseudo a business and I review the shoes and so it's a little bit different, but take the channel and what I'm doing with this out of it. If I weren't doing anything business related to my running, would I feel like I was spending too much time running? I would say the same thing that I say about what's the ideal mileage level per week. However many miles you can run without getting injured, fired, or divorced, you can go run those miles, right? Run those, those are, those are the three things. Don't get injured, don't get fired, don't get divorced, don't develop a weird relationship with food or running, right? then you'll be good. So I would say if you're meeting all your commitments in life, and there's certainly been times where I'm not meeting my commitments because of running, because I'm prioritizing it, and I have the excuse of, oh, I have the channel and the business, so it kind of lets me get away with it and do some mental gymnastics, but if you don't, and if I didn't, I would say that that's really the case, right? That's really the case. We gotta meet our priorities. That's what, again, being a hobby jogger is about. We have all these different priorities, but sometimes we gotta, we gotta prioritize ourselves and what we want to do with this and marathon training is a big commitment running can be a big commitment so I'd also say if you're looking to do marathon training if you're looking to do high mileage running you got to have people around you who understand what that means or it's not going to work out and it might be you are taking a lot of time <laughs> doing running so that's what I would say and then Nick also said is it possible to improve if we can only run three times per week. So this is the same question or similar question that Andrew asked. There's a lot of questions about time, recovery, and getting faster, right? Those are the, the main topics today, but yes, yes. Run as hard as you can without getting injured as often as you can. Those, that's the principle of getting faster. So if you can only run three days per week, make one of those days your long run. So whatever that means to you, maybe it's 90 minutes, two hours, two and a half hours, make one of those runs a fast run, a workout, or just run as fast. And then the third day, if you're feeling good, make that also a faster run, make that a relaxed run, whatever it is. But you can get you can get faster with whatever constraints you have. Now, if you're an elite marathoner, or if I had to all of a sudden drop down to 20 miles per week, maybe I wouldn't be getting faster, but maybe I'd also run all those 20 miles at a 540 pace, and I would be getting faster. So you, I've said this before, and we're getting played out by the sun here. It's playing us out because it's going down, but you gotta operate within your constraints. So if you only have three days per week, if you only have five hours a day or five hours a week to run, you gotta use those the best you can. You gotta prioritize and you gotta go hard and put in the work, right? And crush some dang hills, baby. All right, that's all we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Order your Super Blast 2 through my link. Order the flies are coming. Order your hobby jogger hats through the link below. If you want the Ghost Max 2, or that through the link below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this community and supporting everything we're doing. I'll see.